What's good, y'all? This is Michael Smith, aka Just Merc. Call me what you want. Uh, it's episode 13 of The Raw Truth, and hopefully, I'll learn a little bit more about myself, and you guys can learn a little bit more about me in the process. Bruce still likes me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What a way to. Way to start the show. Was that, that was it though, right? Well, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you. Um, you have a lot of questions. Okay. A lot of people are interested in getting to know you a little bit more. So the first one is, who influenced you to become a bodybuilder? Oh, all right. So honestly, it wasn't even bodybuilding that got me into training. Like when I first started, it wasn't like, okay, I want to compete for sure. But the, the first Creed movie that came out when Michael B. Jordan was like doing his training and looking crazy and I was like, you know, at the time I, I wasn't in any sports, so I was getting ready to go into engineering. And you know, I ran, I did a little bit of, of physical fitness, but it wasn't anything structured or, or consistent or all that consistent. And I saw him in that movie and I was like, you know, I might I, I might look a little better with a little little muscle on me. Uh, Cause I was real, real skinny and pretty small at the time. So, so that was it. And then as I got into it and and started to learn more about training and nutrition, you know, then I started seeing, you know, more physiques, I guess, out there and, and then just kind of ran with it from there. So this isn't a question on here, but it's a good follow up. For those uh -huh. people who maybe want to get into fitness, who are a little scrawny or skinny, mm -hmm. what advice would you have for them? You don't necessarily have to to purely just bodybuild to put on size. I think that's that's a good note. Like if you're not really doing much training at all, you know, you could train, for example, for that movie, like you could train for, for boxing or, or get into some kind of sport that's gonna up your, your level of physical fitness. And that's a good start. If you, you know, if you have a love for bodybuilding or, or you develop one along the way, you know, that's smooth, but, but just start somewhere, start with something manageable and start with something you can, you can stick to. You don't need to be going all out, you know, six days a week, crushing yourself from the beginning. Just, just get started three days a week, two days a week, Maybe one day a week if, it, if the task seems real daunting, but it doesn't have to be a full go from the start. For the days you don't feel like going to the gym or you just kind of feel tired, how do you stay motivated? What gets you back into feeling that? So I, I recently had a conversation about this and it's, it's like a, you know, there's little sayings out there on motivation and, and uh, I think it, it comes and goes and you, you can find little ways to motivate yourself, whether it's from personal experience or, you know, any kind of, like, you know, people use past trauma or, there's a lot of ways you can get yourself juiced up and motivated, but what really matters is your dedication and your consistency. Because most, most days or periods throughout the day, I'm not motivated, but I know what needs to be done and, and I trust that, you know, I'm gonna continue the discipline that's already got me to that point. So it's, it's kind of less about finding the motivation a lot of times and and just about saying I committed to being disciplined, so I'm going to continue that. And then, you know, the motion, motivation will spring up at, at some point, but you can't just rely on it. Is there anything that you've had to overcome that's made you who you are today? Yeah, I mean, definitely, like, yeah. Um, I mean, growing up, like, I don't, I don't get into it much. Um, but growing up, like, I didn't come from the, the typical like family situation, uh, you know, my mom and dad weren't in my life, uh, you know, for, for the longest time. I, you know, I still don't have a relationship with my father and, you know, that's, that's fine. You know, it is what it is. I think over time you learn to embrace that and you learn, you know, if I want, if I want to look at myself like a resilient person, if I want to be a, uh, you know, someone with, with patience and and really like all the the strong characteristics you'd like to develop it's not going to happen with an easy life so when i look back at those times and you know i still i still have to think on them i still there's days i still process things but overall i'm grateful for it because you know those situations growing up allowed me to develop the character some of the characteristics i have now and i don't think you know, had I had it easier, I don't think I would be the way I am. Um, so just looking at it in that light, you know, even for little things that come up, like, you know, you got a, you got a busy, stressful work week. Well, if you can get through that work week, it, you know, you do the best you can, you 
carry yourself with as much composure as possible, well, you're gonna be able to handle stress better after it. So, you know, it's kind of flipping it. It's like, yeah, I'm going through it right now, but this is gonna allow me to, to handle that better and have the, have the characteristic of, of someone who, you know, who can manage stress, who can handle adversity. Love that. And everyone wants to know, do you have a girlfriend? Man, so, <laughs> man, day two of this, it just keeps happening. So, uh, there is, I think by the, I'll be, I'll put it this way. By the time this comes out, I'm going to have made it official because there's someone special. So, so, so that's it. That's it right there. Yeah. I love that. How do you deal with late night hunger and cravings? Chobani, zero lactose, zero sugar yogurt. That's it right there. I put a little, uh, cause like I'm not on prep now, so. If I'm hungry, you know, I'm, I haven't, usually if I'm hungry at night, it's not because I've eaten a lot during the day. Um, so I usually have a little bit of room in my in my diet and I get that, that yogurt, it's lactose free. Comes in, I mean, in Ohio, they only have it in vanilla and strawberry. Down here, they probably have all the flavors. But uh, I'll put in like a little, little dark chocolate, sometimes a little granola, maybe a little cinnamon if I'm feeling, if I'm feeling the cinnamon. And, I just kind of munch on that and I'm, I'm smooth, that's it. Do you have an in-depth stretching routine that you do? Uh, yes, do I do it consistently? Not all the time, um, but I'll go through like a little, uh, almost, almost like a, what do they call that? Like a yoga. Flow. Yoga flow, thank you, that's the word. So, you know, you do, go like the downward dog and then, uh, the cobra, and then go into a, like a really deep lunge, get the hip flexors. That's what tightens up the most for me if I'm like working on my laptop a lot and s sitting a lot during the day is like your hip flexors, that psoas muscle. So I try to incorporate some stretching when I'm on it that opens that up. How does someone establish a strong-willed mindset like yours? Strong, well, I appreciate that, number one. I think it's something you never like, you know, it's kind of like a spectrum you can always increase on, that there's not necessarily an end, end to. So, you know, I look at it as I'm always in the process of like sharpening that mindset. Um, but again, just, just experience, experience time and, and self-awareness, you know, being able to look at your week or your month and, and, and reflect back on, you know, where, where did I maybe not live up to the expectation I have for myself and and then being aware of that so that when the next time comes around, you can go, okay, I need to do this differently. So just a little, little self-assessment, um, but you know, time and experience really more than anything. Best workout split. Best workout split. As, as advice, the one that you can stick to. Um, for me, I like anything that's, that's gonna prioritize my weak body parts. So, I, you know, of course I want to hit all muscle groups throughout the week, but man, if I can't, if I'm on a split where I'm hitting shoulders twice a week, just get, build some nice round delts. I like splitting up my hamstrings and my quads for the most part between two leg sessions, have a couple, like a main chest day and kind of a secondary chest day where I hit chest and a little bit of arms and then a killer back day where I can really move some weight around like that's it for me right there. How do you naturally dry out during la uh, the last week of prep and how do you approach peak week? So it's been a couple years since my last peak week on prep. I know, I mean, going into it, there's nothing really different. Like when I was working with my coach, like of course you have a different protocol for that last week, but you know, all the weeks leading up to it, you're just, you know, you might get two weeks at a time from your coach and you're just executing, executing, executing. Like, I'm not really looking ahead going, oh man, I gotta do this for peak week when it's, you know, 10 weeks out. I'm just focused on that one week of training. So it's kind of the same mentality. And then, you know, things change when it comes to manipulating your water. You know, some coaches will have you cut a fair bit of water. Um, mine did, that's just, that's just how he rolled. So it was, uh, 
some some natural diuretics out there. You got stuff like dandelion root, um, and then that combined with tapering off water, and then playing with your salt a little bit. And that's it. But you know, I was lucky to have a good coach, so he gave me the game plan. And the times I did have my peak weeks, I just executed to the best of my ability, and and uh, usually came in pretty dry. I was proud. I was proud. Stairmaster or incline treadmill? Man, Stairmaster, quit playing. If you're on an incline treadmill, it definitely will work. But if you if you want to push yourself, and, and for me, my heart rate just gets up there faster on the stairs. I swear, you take like four or five steps, and you're already you're already there. So I like being able to get my heart rate up faster, and then of course it stays there because it's it's uh, usually keep it at a steady pace. But I don't know. I always I joke with Mike. I try to bring him onto the the stairs anytime yes. we're doing cardio. It's usually when you need it the most. That's what I mean. If you hate it, you know you know why you hate it. It's working. <laughs> do you do cardio every day? Yeah, I do. I, I just enjoy it. Um, like even on my off days, like of course there's days where the schedule gets a little busy. I may do the my main weight training session and skip on the cardio knowing I'm gonna drop my calories a little bit that day. But like my game plan is to do it every day. Um, and I like it, I like, I'll put on a little football or something, catch up on sports and just kind of zone out for a minute. How many calories are you eating a day? It's usually around like 2,700. Um, through, and I kind of go back and forth between track and I'll track for a couple of weeks, religiously everything. And then because I eat the same thing and then I may travel a little bit, I'll go, okay, I know what I need to be eating. I'm on the go. Other things are a priority right now since I'm not prepping for anything. So. In my mind, I'm like, okay, I should be pretty close to that 26, 2700 mark. And then uh, once I get back and I'm like, okay, things are a little calm. Let me just make sure I'm at where I think I'm, I need to be at. When did you know the fitness industry was the industry you wanted and needed to stay in? I think it was, it was probably once I was doing YouTube. It was the first year, I guess, I was in it. Um, I was just on Instagram, you know, post, posting some stuff, some transformation photos, and then I, I started doing YouTube. Probably sh like shortly before it had been a year on Instagram, and then you know, as I'm posting some videos, posting transformation video, kind of gets out there a little bit, and YouTube particularly because it was like that feedback and that connection with some of the people watching. I was like, that's special. That's that's when I was like, I didn't take that connection for granted and I realized it's the, the connection with the people not necessarily the role like the title of being in the industry but it it was just having that opportunity and that platform to connect with people and share you know some of the things I'm picking up and share the same energy that that got me into training once I realized how real that was it was like okay this is this is pretty pretty smooth and the people want to know what city has the most muscle mommies what city has the most <laughs> I mean, this isn't something I really look for in a city. Uh, That's hard to say. I, well, I, I feel like, what, like Texas is crazy. So there's probably some cities out there, like, I don't know, man. Da I'll say, I'll what you say, Texas. Dallas? You, oh, that's what, yeah, that's what I meant. I was thinking, I was thinking all those gyms were in Dallas. That's true. So even if muscle mommies are in other cities, they're mm -hmm. stopping in Houston at some point mm -hmm. in time. So I'll give it to Houston. Houston's a great place. Yeah. Love Houston. Do you have any weird pre-workout or post-workout rituals? All right, so I know everyone can relate to this, but when you, you're taking a post-workout shake, and you're taking it in your blender bottle, you put the water, milk, almond milk, whatever, you maybe throwing your creatine, throwing, the, of course, the raw protein, Usually double scoop that in, shake it up. What's, what do you do after you shake it? You drink it, right? No. You open the lid and you lick the top of that lid so that that little droplet of, of protein shake milk doesn't just, you know, just <laughs> kiss you on the nose right there. Like that's every time you gotta lick it. But like, I, I know I know everybody's gotta be doing that. So I'm not, I, I've seen it done and I do it without thinking about it. I was actually, yeah, it was bad. I yeah. do that too. Anything weird before? Before? Florida Flex is 
with oh, no air conditioning. Okay. All right. So I can't do this in Ohio because it's not as hot. It doesn't have the same. Uh, what does Kai Green always say? Thermogenesis. Talking, something like that. Well, it's hot down here. So when Mike and I were working together, stand at the same spot. I was like, all right, let's go to the gym. So what? Maybe 10 minutes to the gym. Yeah. It wasn't far. And you know, it's gonna be a nice 88 degrees on a on a late Wednesday morning. And uh, you know, we get we get in the Jeep, which is all black, mind you, so the sun really really has a nice effect on it and heating it up. And we get in. And every time I think I I don't even think I'll say anything for the beginning, but I would leave the air off and I, the windows would be up. And this this dude would be in the Jeep like, golly, man, you got to crack a window or something in here. I was like, nah, man, I'm trying to warm up before the gym. So that's, you know, yeah, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. That's fair. And every place is like 60 degrees inside, so. Yeah, gotta warm we're up. good. Mike was hating, but I know he was warm. You liked it. You enjoyed it. <laughs> it's 10 minutes. You enjoyed it. Are there any? That's a good one, Mike. I appreciate you. Are there any weird workouts that you've done or anything that you maybe were trying to film that you were like, oh no, that was a really bad idea? Yes, I can think of one particular instance. Um, it was not my idea, but I was, uh, was working with a company. This is like a few years ago. We did a, a thousand calorie challenge to, to burn a thousand calories. So they gave us like these trackers it was myself and, a, and a, another female athlete. And I think the, the guy putting us through the workout was like ex-Marine or something. So he was just, it was grueling. It was like nonstop circuits. And, you know, I was, I was on the road, so I was, I was, you know, I hadn't slept well at all either. We did the thousand calories. I don't know how long it took us. One of the hardest workouts I've done because I don't typically train that kind of circuit style. So everything on me was burning, which which was fine, but I just didn't have the rest or nutrition to to really be doing that at the time. So I don't know if that contributed, but the next day, like my body shut down. I got sick. I was flying back on the plane, in the back of the plane, in the toilet in the back, just kind of like all the flight attendants knew me at that point. So I was taking my good old time in the back there and, and uh, I think the workout had kind of put my body over the edge, just, you know, like I said, being stressed out on the road too. So that was a bad mix of things. Have you ever taken too much pre-workout? Oh, definitely. In the beginning, for sure, like days of like three, 350, 400 milligrams of caffeine. Now like 50 will get me there sometimes. Like I'm, I'm smooth. I'd rather have the focus and the pump uh, and some good blood flow more than just the, the sheer energy of caffeine. Um, so I don't miss those days. People want to ask when you're going to compete in the Mr. Olympia. I mean, that's a good question, you know. Um, <laughs> no, I don't, right now I don't have, I would start much smaller and just, you know, I would look at when I would get back into uh, competing again. I'd like to eventually move to, to Classic if I did go at it again. Uh, of course, the last show I did, I did have some, some health complications, so that kind of had me chill out and just kind of re, uh, reassess exactly what my goals are with, with everything. Um, but, you know, I still enjoy training. I still see some of the physiques out there and, and think about like what my potential is when it comes to competing. So it's, it's a bug that's always in my mind, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put a time to it because I know it's it's definitely in there. So that's a question I don't have the answer to. And then what is your biggest accomplishment you are proud of so far? I think like like truly it's the man I'm becoming. You know, I'm not anywhere near where I think I can be, but just know, knowing how I carry myself, knowing that, um, you know, I feel like I'm a more self-aware person than I've been. I feel like, you know, I'm able to have a good impact on the people around me. Um, I think those are the things that that really, that really matter, you know, in, in, in terms of like, you know, who you are and what you leave behind. So I want to continue that by no means am I satisfied with it, but, but I've been, I think that's what I'm most proud of. What does that look like for you? The end goal? What, who do you want to become? I think an example to, 
example to the people around me, you know, whether that's, you know, my family, you know, maybe if I'm fortunate enough to have kids one day, uh, my wife, uh, you know, people I work with, my friends, and you know, I want to be an, be an example uh, of, of someone, you know, they can count on someone they know is going to always stick to, you know, stick to their morals. Um, and, and, you know, someone who's, who's good energy to be around and, and and just a, a positive impact on their life, period. Love that. So I think that'll conclude episode 13 of The Raw Truth. Appreciate you guys asking some questions. And, uh, well, I won't see you in the next episode, but come back for the next episode. Yeah.